In this video, we are going to cover how to create basic call queues. First, log into your 3CX management console. Once logged in, in the left navigation menu, click on Call Queues. When the Call Queues dashboard has loaded, click on the blue Add button at the top of the dashboard. Firstly, name your Call Queue. For example, this could be for a business department, such as finance or sales. In this example, we will call it Want to Call Demo. Next, assign an extension number for the queue. It is recommended that you reserve a group of numbers specifically for call queue extensions that are outside of your user extensions range. Next, you should choose your polling strategy. This is how calls coming into this call queue will ring. For example, Ring All will call all extensions in a queue at once. Hunt Random Start will ring around the call queue group, starting at a random user and moving on after a predefined time. Round Robin will call through a call queue group in a predefined order, moving on after a predefined time. Longest Waiting will first forward to the person who has not answered a call in the longest amount of time. Least Talk Time will first forward to the person who has spent the least time on calls that day. Fewest Answered will first forward to the person who has picked up the least amount of calls that day. Hunt by Threes Random will bring three extensions at a time within a group, in a random order. Hunt by Threes Prioritized will ring three extensions at a time within a group in a predefined order. The skill-based routing options will be covered in a separate video. Once your polling strategy has been selected, you should define your ring time. This is the amount of time that a call will ring an extension in a hunt or round robin before moving on to the next available user. The direct inbound dialing option allows you to assign an available number to the call queue. This will allow your customers or clients to call directly into this queue if you require this as a service. This is not required in this example. The next thing that we should define under the destination if no answer heading should be how long a call will ring within a call queue before further action is taken. This is defined as a total number of seconds across the group and is advised to be a multiple of the ring time that you have set. Then we should define what will happen to the call if this time is reached. This could be end call, connect to another extension, connect to a voicemail for that call queue group extension, connect to a digital receptionist or auto attendant within the system, connect to a different call queue or ring group, forward to an outside number, which for this example could be a manager's mobile number or an external call handling service, or send to call flow apps. Whilst a call is on hold within a call queue, you can define on hold music or an audio file that will be played for people whilst waiting in the queue. All audio files must meet the audio specifications. It must be a WAV format, 8 kHz, 16-bit PCM and mono. To ensure that your audio files meet this specification, we recommend a service such as g711.org. Their default settings will allow you to upload your audio file, convert it, and download it in the correct format for use. As well as being able to set music on hold whilst your users are waiting to be answered, you can also play an intro prompt before the hold music starts. This could be marketing information or information about standard wait times and more. Your audio file must meet the same specifications as the on hold music we covered previously. However, you can also choose for this to not forward to agents until after the prompt has been played in full. If you do not select this option, call agents will be able to pick up calls whilst the intro is playing for people on hold. You may decide that you would prefer users to listen to this information before a call is answered. If so, ensure that this option is selected. Next, you can choose if you would prefer to announce a user's position in a call queue. These are automated messages that 3CX provide by default, 
However, these can be changed. We will cover this in a future video. The announcement interval will define how long in seconds between telling users their queue position. In this example, we have set this to 60 seconds. You can also define the language that the automatic prompts will be given in under the queue language heading. Once this has been completed, scroll back to the top of the add call queue screen where you can click on the agents tab. This will be the location where we will define which users will be a part of this call queue. First, click on the blue add button under the call queue agents heading. A pop-up selection box will appear where you can select the individual agents you would like to include. Once this has been done, click OK to add them to the agents list. In this selection, you can also select individual users and select move up or move down to change the ring priority in the list. Next, under the advanced tab at the top of this screen, you can enable features such as callback mode where a customer or client will be able to press button 2 on their handset to request for a callback. You can also define that this is offered after a number of seconds. For example, if your user is on hold for 80% of your total queue time, you could define 80% as a number in seconds before this is offered. Next, you can define queue preferences, such as wrap-up time, also known as a cooling off period. This is the amount of time after a call has ended that a user agent will have before their extension will be available in the queue to pick up new calls. This is useful for call agents who require time to make notes on calls after they have finished before moving on to the next call. Next, under the maximum callers in queue, you can define the total amount of people who could be on hold at any given time. Please note, however, this is also defined by the number of SIP trunks available for your system. If you have four SIP trunks, the maximum callers waiting in the queue could be no more than four. By setting this to a number, such as two here, we can define that when there are more than two callers in the queue, that all other calls will forward to the same rules as if there is no answer as the queue is busy. If set to zero, this will use the maximum amount of trunks available in the system. Under the Configure SLA Time in Seconds heading, you can define a maximum SLA time for a call queue before an alert is generated to the queue manager. For example, if a user is waiting on a call for more than 30 seconds, the queue manager will be notified that the SLA time has been breached. In the queue recording section, you can select if you would like to allow for a user to opt in or out of having their calls recorded. Without this selected, the system will use its predefined options. And under the Schedule Queue Statistics Reset heading, you can either manually reset the queue statistics, or you can set this to be reset daily at a predefined time, weekly on a specific day, or on the first day of each month. Next, in the Notifications tab, you can define a queue manager this will be the person who would receive predefined notifications. And under the Queue Email Notifications heading, you can select which of these notifications they will receive, such as if an SLA is breached, when a callback is made, when a callback fails, or when a queue call is lost. Once this has been completed, click OK to save this call queue. This queue, or queue extension, can then be added to your digital receptionist or auto attendant. Please check out our 3CX playlist for more 3CX instructional videos.